Welcome, welcome to the Show Up With Show. So happy that you have joined me this evening. A little past 7 p.m. on the East Coast. And tonight I have with me somebody who many of you have heard about the Free State Project that is in New Hampshire. And you might say to yourself, what the hell is the Free State Project? Ah, maybe you don't know what that is. No worries. I get bugged all the time about it to move up to New Hampshire. Like every month they yell at me to do it because I live in New York City. But I have someone here who can tell us about it, about themselves. They are someone who, they were in the machine. They were one of the people in the machine. They are leaving the machine to come into the Free State Project. Former state senator, or outgoing, I should say, outgoing state senator and incoming executive director for the Free State Project, the man himself, Eric Brickey. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, Larry. I, for folks who are watching or folks who are listening, I'm dressed pretty sharp. I'm in a suit and tie. I figure I need to be dressed sharp for the Sharp Way uh, podcast. So um, anyway, it's a pleasure to be I with you. I think you were just trying to make me look bad because you knew I'd be in a hoodie. <laughs> so you were like, I'm going to make this guy look bad. And you well, kind of did, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, I was. Uh, it's been a day. I, I was actually just in the Maine State Senate today, and I haven't had a chance to change clothes. I'm usually dressed a little bit more casual. I uh, try not to look so stuffy, but uh, oh, okay. anyway, All right. pleasure to be I, with you, Larry. I don't believe you, but that's okay. I'm teasing. <laughs> if you want to follow uh, uh, the sen- the good senator, you can follow him on Twitter at Senator Brakey uh, on Twitter. And if you're listening, B-R-A-K-E-Y, that's the cool way of spelling it. You can also head over to a YouTube page or to the Facebook page and the details of what he's doing, particularly the Free State Project, are there. So I have to ask you something. You are leaving government and moving into the Free State Project, basically a nonprofit, basically. Why are you doing that and not, you know, running for something else, running for governor yeah. or running for uh, Congress or running for Senate or whatever? We could use someone like you running for president right now. So, <laughs> I mean, something like that. What, what made you do this and not stay in the machine? Well, a lot of people have been asking me that question. It certainly, um, I, I, I was, I teased it late last year. I put out on social media, I've got an announcements to make about my plans for 2024 and everyone speculating like, oh, is he announcing another run for the main state Senate? Is he announcing that he's getting started on a campaign for governor? Because certainly I've run for statewide office before mm-hmm. I ran for the U S Senate in 2018. I ran for Congress at one point. Um, and, um, Really, I I um I decided uh, to do <laughs> to take a different turn. Um, mm-hmm. I've been in on the ballot and uh, you know in various stages of in and out of elected office for a decade now, following my work on the Ron Paul campaign in 2012. Right. And um, for me, it's a few things. Part of it, I feel like if you love liberty and you are in this uh, in this inside political game in elected office and the legislature yeah. and all that it starts to eat away at your soul <laughs> got it that's why okay <laughs> this is a place for people who love power and those of us who love liberty we're always fighting our instincts to want to run for the hills and instead we run for office and i am proud of the work that i've done there but i've been training up other people to pass the torch to and uh for me as proud as i am of the work that i've gotten done in maine Passing Mm -hmm. a lot of great policies, constitutional carry, working on medical cannabis, defending privacy rights and civil liberties and many things. I'm proud of a lot of the work that's been done. It's been hard to see my own state that I love, like so many states around the country, drifting in the wrong direction, sliding towards. Okay, I live in New York. I don't want to hear you complain. (laughs) Well, (laughs) and that's that's the question I want to ask you, Larry, right? Right. There was just, there was just a report that came out freedom in the 50 states. Now the state of Maine was not ranked very well. We were ranked number 43. New Hampshire was ranked number 1. And of course, where was the Empire State? Where was New York? 50 state? baby. Number, number 50. So number here's one. Where, Yes, we are the least free state in the union. Take that California. Number, ah! number 1 for six tyranny. <laughs> By the way, 6 years running. 6 years in a yeah. row. New York State, the least free state in the union. No one is more tyrannical than we are, goddammit. (laughs) That is it, number one. 
So actually, New York is number one on my list of places where we want to recruit Liberty people from to come and move. I to New know. You're not that far away, Larry. What's keeping you there? You should come join us and you should bring the Statue of Liberty with you. She would feel much more at home sitting outside of Portsmouth than sitting outside New York City. You are not wrong. And people bug me literally every month. Somebody bugs me to show up. Literally every month somebody does. Someone's like, hey, you coming up to New Hampshire? All the time. I'll tell you why I stay. There's a couple of reasons why I stay. Number one is this is my city and my state. And I'm born here. I'm raised here. I do love this place, even though it drives me crazy. I do feel comfortable here, even though it does drive me. It is, it is the devil that I know. But more importantly, this is the front line, right? This is the front line. If we hold them here, we hold them everywhere. If we hold them here, this doesn't get to do. We don't, we don't need a Liberty Homeland. If I can hold him here, right? And I'm trying to hold him here. And damn it, I'm losing. But I am a Marine. So I keep fighting until I have, I, I fight until I no longer have the means to resist. And I still have the means to resist. So I keep fighting. So that's why I stay. But well, it, it, it's it's commendable. I mean, that's the attitude I've had in Maine for a number of years. Sure. So I don't begrudge you for it. And in fact, I haven't given up on Maine. I, I, I'm not leaving without having trained up a lot of people who can sure. take my place. Sure. Um, and the long no, run, I, I know, I know the Libertarian Party in Maine. By the way, Libertarian Party yeah. in Maine is trying its damnness to keep moving forward. I think that's absolutely true. I think you do have a Liberty Movement in Maine. Oh yeah, um, it's and oh, yeah. much better than New York's Liberty Movement. Our our movement is broken. <laughs> it's broken, yeah. but yours is still moving. They're, yes, they're, it, despite kind of Democrats dominating the state of Maine right now, there is a really strong Libertarian streak in Maine. And I've worked with so many great people in the Maine Liberty Movement over the last 10 years. And with the Libertarian Party of Maine, I'm actually, well, I'm a registered Republican and I run as a Republican. I'm also uh, a member of the Maine Libertarian Party because you can be a, I forget yep. how they classify it, like you can be like a lesser member. <laughs> right. I signed the, I signed the pledge, right. I, non-aggression principle and all of that. Uh, and I worked so, with them so to increase ballot let me, access opportunities. Let me walk down that road if I could. What yeah. a lot of people fight about, and I'll tell you where I stand and then with others. I recognize that the Liberty Movement is not the Libertarian Party. I get that, right? The Libertarian right. Party is a piece of the Liberty Movement, right? The Liberty Movement's a big piece. The party's one of them. I like the party. I like politics. So I work within the party, right? Because I prefer that. But and you're not going to you win as a Republican in New York anyway, so. <laughs> also true. Yes, also true. But but the question I have is, how do you feel about third parties in general? Do you think they're a good idea, a bad idea? Should we be pushing third parties? Should we be trying to run as libertarians? What's your view in that regard? You know, I um, I think it depends on what your goal is. Okay. So um, if your goal is to use a third party as a vehicle to educate people and try to reach people and you've got a particular strategy, um, then – Hey, more power to you. I, you know, but you know, I, several years ago, I, I had a, a a debate that many people saw with Dave Smith on this very question about whether, for the Liberty Movement, the Libertarian mm -hmm. Party or the Republican Party is the more effective vehicle that we should be pursuing um, uh, strategically. And I mm -hmm. argued for the Republican Party because that's the path I've been on since the Ron Paul campaign, and I think been very effective down that path the last uh, the last dozen years. Um, so um, I think some things that we need to grapple with, if the goal is to win elections, and that's not everyone's goal, and that's fine, but if the goal is to win elections, there are some very fundamental things that we have to deal with that are built, baked into our political system as the laws have established it, which is with the current system of the first past the post plurality based voting system, it's very hard to get beyond the the two things. One, people's brand loyalty to one of the two major parties. And yep. also, even beyond that, the the sense of um of wanting to stop the greater evil. So people will we see this all the time. People will say, so, well, so me, I might I get you. Yeah. Oh, so let me ask you then. If you ran as I know you're not running anymore, but assuming you were to run as a Republican or even in your your new new position, if there was a chance to break this idea up, in other words, to get things like ranked choice voting or whatever might be the, the, the thing that people or easier ballot access or whatever is the mm -hmm. thing that someone who's trying to break the system is, is, is pushing, 
would you be someone who would support that kind of thing? Or you're like, nah, the two parties is fine. Let's move on. Um, well, it depends on what it is. I I'm a skeptic okay. of our ranked choice voting. We've been dealing with it in okay. Maine, and I, I don't think it's produced the results that people would like to see about it. But who knows? We're we're having this laboratory. Okay, then maybe not that. And maybe but it's a better, easier ballot access, maybe, or maybe it's an open primary system, or whatever. People try different yeah. things to break the system. I didn't I didn't necessarily mean it was ranked choice. Yeah, but something they're trying to do to break the system. Yeah, I'm very open to that. I'm very open minded. In fact, I sponsored legislation which we got passed uh, working with the Libertarian Party of Maine to lower the threshold for ballot access requirements so okay. that um, so we've made it easier for the Libertarian Party to to get on the ballot. Um, so that was a good victory. And I think that there's value in third parties. I, I mean, I think especially when both of the, the political the, the major party candidates are terrible. You know, sometimes it's not a bad thing for a third party to be there to offer a different perspective and maybe even play spoiler to demonstrate there is or a pool win. of votes out here. And if you as the Republican Party wants our liberty votes, you need to put forward liberty candidates. Otherwise, we're going somewhere else and you're going to lose to the Democrats. I mean, it's a great, I think, great kind of carrot and stick approach to try to make uh, to create more room for libertarians within major parties. Well, it's funny. Shelley brings up a point. She says, I'm a libertarian who a libertarian who runs the Republican. So basically Rand Paul. Now I know Ron Paul for you is very looms very large in your in your history of of what you're doing is a, a big important part in your world. Is Rand Paul in that world or really is just Ron and that's kind no, of it? I love I love Rand. I mean Rand hmm, Rand okay. um <laughs> I mean I I'm always a little embarrassed to admit this because it's not like the uh it's it, it's not the the deepest reason to run for state senate but when i was like fresh off the ron paul campaign in 2012 and uh we didn't get the outcome we wanted but certainly we beat a lot of expectation we took over the whole state republican party in maine in 2012 mm. um and i told myself i had thought i was getting out of politics i was going to go back to new york city where i had worked for several years out of college as a professional actor i was going to go back into into acting um but after we took over the whole Republican Party and I heard that Rand was considering to run in four years, I thought, all right, I'm going to commit myself to stay at this for four years and I'm going to try to help Rand Paul become president of the United States. And you know what? I bet I would be more effective helping Rand Paul become president if instead of just being some activist, if I was a state senator. <laughs> so, ah, OK, so I ran for state Senate and won and, and took out a Democrat incumbent and and. Um, um, and the rest is, I suppose the rest is history. There we go. So let's move off of you into the free state project. And I have a comment here. You asked a very important question. This is Mike. Mike Voss says, so I'm interested in hearing exactly what a Liberty Homeland is. How is that different than just following the constitution? And I think a lot of people, I mean, and there is a difference obviously, but I think a lot of people feel like if you're liberty, you're basically a constitutionalist. But I don't think that's always true. I think it's a good place to go. I think it is. I'm not sure it's always true. Where where do you stand on this? Is, is Mike off on this? Is he what is he what's going on here? Well, I think the constitution is a great start. <laughs> if we could get back to the constitution, that would be like a dramatic improvement on where we are today. Um, so certainly, um, I mean, I advocate for following the constitution and, uh, and the principles enshrined within it, though. I think that the declaration of independence is a bit more of a philosophical document than the constitution is constitution is a, a, a decent framework for government, um, as at least compared to all the others that are out there. Um, but what is a Liberty Homeland? So I think to answer that question, we need to back up about the purpose of the free state project, right? The okay. free state project is a mass migration movement. It okay. is a uh, recognition that as libertarians, there are millions of us scattered across America. But even though there are millions of us, we are scattered. We are a diaspora. We are yep. um, within our, our communities across the country. We may be, you know, one to 5%. Uh, and so we are easily ignored in both the culture and the politics uh, around the country. So we can try to succeed one of two ways. We can try to persuade majorities of people to change their minds and to embrace liberty and reject socialism and reject tyranny. And I think we've been trying that for a very long time. Or we can say uh, we can 
uh, do a different approach of concentration and say, if we are weak because we are scattered, why do we have to be scattered? Why don't we come together in one place and and not be a political minority? And so the Free State Project was formed about 22 years ago on this idea of what if we got libertarians to concentrate in one state and to create a libertarian state, a free state. Um, and so New Hampshire was selected after a long process um, for a number of reasons. Uh, don't know why you didn't pick New York City. <laughs> I don't think the project <laughs> would have worked there, sadly. No. Uh, though there's a part no. of me that really wishes they would have picked Maine. I wouldn't have to move and maybe That's Maine true. would be going in the right direction rather than the wrong direction right now. But uh, but New Hampshire has always been, it's the live free or die state. It's always had that strong liberty ethic there. And so um, thousands of people under this project have moved and relocated to New Hampshire, joining with native granite staters who, who love liberty to reinforce the best parts of New Hampshire. Uh, what already made New Hampshire great, the, the, right. the, 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 the leave me alone attitude, that the freedom to, to keep what you earn. Live no free income or tax. die, man. Li absolutely. That's what, yeah. that's what this country was supposed to be about, but it is a forgotten ideal in most gotcha. states except for New Hampshire. Got it. Got so it. That's, okay. so that's what we're doing. And that's and what you're trying to achieve, drawing people there. So then, so the idea of a liberty homeland really is just the free state project. It's drawing people back to this area or to this, and that's where we're back, but to this area to take what is scattered and to make it co concentrated. Right. That's the goal. Okay. Right. And so, and together in one place, we can do a lot of great things. We can build community among people who share our values. I mean, that's one of the most beautiful things about the Free State Project. Everyone looks at all the great liberty policies that are being passed, and there are many from cutting, you know, eliminating so many taxes, passing real school choice policies. We defend the Guard just passed the New Hampshire House and looks actually very promising in the Senate. Well, I'm happy to talk about that later if you'd like to. It's something I'm very passionate about, but but the community of being with people, being with um, a community so large of libertarians that whatever your niche personal interest is, there are communities of libertarians in New Hampshire that you can do that with. Maybe you're so. Your thing so, so hold on, let me see if I can touch it. Then, so Mike's question is, how is different from just being more like a, a constitutionalist? You're saying that there are people in New Hampshire who think that's the right answer. So they get together, but there's other people who may want to go further, people who may not want to go as far. Yeah. So you're actually creating groups of pe groups of Liberty minded people within a free state. Did I get that right? Yes. We're, yeah. We're, we're building, we're building the community. We're bringing more people together. Um, and this, yeah, we are, we are building this Liberty homeland by getting libertarians here and letting people be free to pursue liberty projects as they see fit. Some people are going off and they're starting homeschool co-ops and p helping uh, people kind of teach their kids. Some people are running for the state legislature. We have uh, many free staters who are elected to the state legislature. About a quarter of the New Hampshire House of Representatives are people who are philosophically libertarians, um, which I don't think you see that in that number and that, that percentage anywhere else in the country. Um, so, hold on. I have a specific question. Gene asks, yeah. I have heard of Defend the Guard. Will you have time to explain it? Can you uh, explain Defend the Guard? All right. I am Without, so not like an hour, like a short one, a short one. <laughs> all right. I am so excited to explain Defend the Guard. It is one of my okay. passion projects. Um, so Defend the Guard, it's a simple idea, right? We have been as those of us who are anti-war or at least for a constitutional foreign policy. Maybe you're okay with war in some circumstances, but you want to follow a constitutional process when we do it, right? Um, we have been for decades in the uh, in the war on terror trying to petition and, and convince Congress to accept their responsibility to properly authorize and declare war before our soldiers are sent off into far-flung lands like Syria and Iraq and Afghanistan, and they won't Vietnam. do it. Vietnam, Vietnam, yeah, yeah, of course, happened in Vietnam. We haven't had an actual formal declaration of war since World War II, 1943. Right. So you would think we've just had a, a half century of peace, <laughs> but far from it. Far from right. it. Um, and so, 
Congress won't accept that responsibility because they like the status quo where they get to get all the money from the military right. industrial complex for their campaigns, and they never have to go on record voting for the wars and explaining themselves to their constituents who might hold them accountable. And so we just have this, uh, the war machine is on autopilot. Well, defend the guard is a way to abandon the idea that we're going to convince Congress to do the right thing on their own just by asking nicely and to say, look, our state national guards in the 50 states account for about half of yep. uh, troops on the ground in these conflicts. Yep. And I literally, when I was in the Marine Corps, this is uh, what drove me crazy. Yep. I was in Marine Corps. I was an active in the Marine, stationed in Virginia, and they made me platoon sergeant to train reservists to send them off to fight in Afghan and not Afghan in, in Iraq. Yeah. I was the active duty guy and I'm sending reservists who have jobs over there. I'm sending the guard over there. I'm like, Hey, we're active yeah. duty. No, we were training reservists and sending them over. And they're supposed to be here for emergencies that arise domestic. Correct. Right. And instead they're, they're over and they've been over in Iraq, over in Syria. And you look at Syria, for example, right? The constitution says there are three conditions under which the militia, the national guard can be mobilized, um, uh, uh, by by Congress to suppress insurrection, to repel invasion, or to enforce the laws of the union. And so you take Syria for an example. Are we suppressing an insurrection? No, we're fomenting an insurrection. That was the whole purpose in Syria, to try yep. to overthrow the Assad regime. Are we repelling an invasion? Well, there's an invasion that happened, <laughs> but we aren't repelling it. We are the invasion. And are yep. we enforcing the laws of the union? Well, there's no declaration of war and there's not even a congressional AUMF. So there is no way you can say that there is a law of the union being enforced. So therefore it's illegal. And the states therefore have the authority to say the New Hampshire National Guard, the Maine National Guard, the New York National Guard, we withdraw our consent for our, tr our National Guardsmen to be deployed into these foreign overseas uh, right. combat uh, uh, zones. And we're calling them home. So the states can do this. And what's right. exciting is um, there's a lot of momentum growing around this. The New Hampshire House has passed it. It's going on to the Senate. The Idaho Senate just passed it. It's going on to their house. The Arizona Senate just passed it. It's going on to their house. In fact, in Texas, uh, the Texas um, it was on the ballot for Texas Republican primary voters. Mm. Over 80% of Texas Republicans voted yes to tell the legislature they want defend the guard. So this is something yep. that we can do on the state level. It is the Achilles heel like of the war machine. Yeah, Jean says she asked because her middle son was a reservist who went to Iraq. So she understands. So that's why she asked them, sure. Yes. Yeah. Shelly says Congress should be impeached for failure to perform their duties as outlined in the Constitution because they vote to fund the wars that they haven't signed into existence. Look at that. Yeah. Well, we have an opportunity to impeach them every two years, and we don't do it. I don't know We why. don't. <laughs> we do not at all. <laughs> Rasputin Jesus says, does the Libertarian Party have utility with free staters largely running in the GOP? Maybe run LP candidates against neocons until they're replaced, the free, by, until they're replaced by free staters. I actually don't know. I know that back and forth Libertarian Party goes back and forth depending upon the state. Do you know what kind of relationship Libertarian Party has with free staters in New Hampshire? Is it an obvious relationship? Is it positive, negative, neutral? Do you know? Yeah, we're all one big community. And I, and I think oh, that, okay. uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have great relationships. Uh, at, well, I'm still getting my feet wet in New Hampshire politics. I'm getting to know a lot of new people. But, uh, you know, I, I know folks at the New Hampshire Libertarian Party and uh, have good relationships with them. And uh, I think that they, and, and I will say, I think this is one of the things I I, I appreciate. Um, I think about a lot of the Mises Caucus folks who kind of who came into the Libertarian Party is one thing I've appreciated in talking with not just folks in New Hampshire but across the country is I think a recognition that um, the Liberty Movement is bigger than just the Libertarian Party, right? That the Libertarian Party should be a tool for the Liberty Movement, but that we should not be we should not fall victim to becoming partisans uh, uh, for a political party in the same way that Republicans and Democrats do, that we are here to serve higher ideals, that we're here, here to serve the, 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 the advance of liberty, and, um, and where the Libertarian Party can be an effective tool, like running as a, as a third candidate in, against a neoconservative and kind of getting them out and 
you know, that that's certainly valuable. But it, I, I do not see, at least in New Hampshire, I think there's a recognition that there doesn't need to be an adversarial relationship between LP members and Liberty Republicans. In fact, we are trying to achieve the same thing and um, and and we can work together. I have not <coughs> excuse me, seen that in New York State at all. I have seen New York State Republicans support Democrats far more than libertarians. The people who sued me off the ballot in New York State were Republicans. Democrats didn't care. The, the Republicans sued me off the ballot. So oh, it, it, it doesn't surprise me. Right. When I, of course, I want to distinguish between Republicans and Liberty Republicans. Right. Sure, there sure, are many, sure, sure. And uh, and certainly, um, certainly uh, I can see why uh, Republicans, if they think they got a shot at it, it, might be threatened by someone like you who, you know, the, why would you vote for the uh, the the um, the Republican candidate who's just got a little bit of liberty flavor when you can have the the real sizzle and steak and Larry Sharp? I got a, I got a lot of sizzle. It's true, a lot of sizzle. <laughs> so yes, I appreciate that. But so, but let me ask. I think maybe a more. Hold on, before I go there, let me talk to my audience real fast, guys. If you like this show, do me a favor, like this right now. I have to get past Al Gore rhythm. I have to get past it. So please click the like button. It does matter to the best of your ability. Do so. Also, if you're watching this on Twitter or X, retweet this or re exit or whatever they call it, redo it, whatever the thing is. If you want your chat to go to the front, super chat me on uh, Larry Sharp YouTube. That's how we make some cash here. I appreciate that. You can also become a member if you really do love me. And I know some of you say you do, but now do you? You can easily become a member. Just click join for 99 per month. You can put some more cash into this pocket so I can stop doing so much damn work during the day. And spend more time doing this, which is I know you all love. That's very helpful if you can. But no matter what, click that like button. It does matter. And please follow the good soon-to-be ex-senator, soon-to-be executive director, uh, Mr. Brakey here at Senator Brakey on Twitter. Or also you can follow the uh, Free State Project at Free State NH on Twitter, too, if you like. Either one of those is fine. So either one you can do. But something else. Tell me, Eric, you have a podcast also. Tell me about that real fast. Yeah, it's a once a week show. It's called the Porcupine Report. Uh, report on news going on in New Hampshire and do some great interviews. In fact, we just <laughs> at the moment that we are recording now the weekly episode. It comes out Wednesdays at seven, so it's actually running concurrently with this uh, with this podcast right now. Sorry to compete with you at the same in the same time slot, Larry. Um, no worries, but mine but, is uh, live. So yeah, your, yours is live. Ours is pre. Our mine is pre recorded, uh, but. After you've watched this wonderful podcast with me and Larry Sharp, if you aren't sick of me yet, you can go and check out the Porcupine Report, which it streams on the Free State Project Facebook and X page and YouTube. And you can also find it on all your favorite podcasting apps, uh, Apple, Spotify, and all that. So, uh, in fact, Thank we you. are the episode we're releasing tonight. We're talking about Defend the Guard. So, to your uh, the your audience, Dean, this is for you. <laughs> Eugene, you, you can you can go. We had a great hour long conversation with uh, the state director, or the uh, the New Hampshire state director of Bring Our Troops Home, who is working on Defend the Guard. We talked about that, so you can check it out. There we go. Bradley says, "I love you, Larry, but I don't have any money. Hire me, and I'll give you some of it back." Now I got to hire you too. Okay, so now Come everyone on. else has to give me more money so I can hire Bradley. But Come Bradley, on, Bradley. You we we see that photo of you with your dog. You must be paying for dog food somehow. Does your dog you really go. need to eat all that much? Throw some of those bucks to Larry. <laughs> but here's what you can do, Bradley. You can still click the like button. That's free. You can still comment. That's free. You can still share. That's free. Absolutely. P. Clock says it. Like, comment, share. He is correct. Absolutely. The Great Babe, also a New Yorker, by the way, says, I've been watching the great work of the Free State Project for a bit and would leverage their community and services if we go to New Hampshire instead of PA. Sorry, Larry, can't stay in New York any lo longer. I'm losing my people to you. Look what you're doing. <laughs> you're taking my people, Eric. You're well, taking them. Well, yeah, well, no, but to be forward. keep taking them until you come and join us, Larry. Then they'll be your people again. Is. You're just taking them away. And then eventually I'll come back and I'll reunite my people again. But yes. But no, um, a lot of people leaving New York, many of them, by the way, follow his example and they go to Pennsylvania. It's a common thing. Obviously, we go to Florida like there's no tomorrow. That's a common. New Yorkers always go to Florida. That's common. Um, but, you know, maybe New Hampshire is more of an answer. Maybe, maybe it is. Do you have a lot of New Yorkers who pop up there? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. I, I keep talking to 
uh, as I'm interviewing people, I keep talking to people who've made the move to New Hampshire and it just comes up and again and again. So where'd you move from? Oh, New York. Well, you made quite an improvement going from number 50 for freedom to number one for freedom. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and Absolutely. Larry, I'll, yes. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, 10 years ago, if you asked me if I was going to make the move, I was saying, you know, I'm, I am, there's no way I'm, I'm in it for, uh, you know, I'm in Maine until the bitter end. And you know what? There are many ways to fight for liberty. And right now, establishing this liberty homeland where we can actually pass liberty policy, become a lighthouse for the world, an example of what a libertarian society can do, uh, the policies we can enact, the prosperity we can achieve. You know, that's something you want to so, be a part of, Larry. You're always welcome. So let me ask an important question. This is a very valid point. Do people really want freedom, right? When you, when you talk about a liberty homeland, do people go, that's silly. That's just some crazy, right? That's just, that's just crazy talk. That's just a bunch of hippies running around in the woods or whatever, right? Do they think that? I feel like when you talk about freedom, so many people say things like this to me. Well, Larry, I'm free. I got to, I went to work today. I'm good. I'm free. But they think that because, because they're not physically in a cage, yeah, they feel like they're free. As they hand over you, half You have to be against that, right? I'm sorry, go yeah. ahead. As they hand over half their income to the man. Yeah. So it is an interesting question. And my answer is some people want freedom. Some people don't. And mm. at a certain point in time, the people who don't want freedom, that's fine. There are 49 states they can live in. <laughs> right? Those who want freedom should come to New Hampshire because we're going to build it there. Right? If you want socialism, there's Vermont. If you want the New York's right of, here for that. If you want imperial, like the worst kind of you know boot on your neck, imperial tyranny, you know, there's New York for you right there. Right, there are plenty of states for those who don't love freedom. There's one state for those who do. Well, Christine says something, and she's right. She says a lot of people are afraid of freedom, and I think she's right. It is to be forward. I mean, look, clearly, I want more freedom. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think so, right? Clearly, I try to, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I act as free as I can. I raise my kids in a very libertarian manner, right? Of course I want it. But I do see people who are afraid. And I guess, do we want to try to make them less afraid? Or do we go, whatever, good luck, live in California. I, I don't know. I, I think her point's a valid one. What do we do about it? What we do about it is we, we, need to, we need to establish examples of free societies, right? People are afraid of the unknown. People are sure. afraid of, right? And, and as long as a free society is just a purely conceptual idea, right? You know, it's like constitutional carry, right? I led oh. the charge on constitutional carry in the state of Maine. We were the sixth state to pass it. Now there's 28 states with Louisiana coming on board, right? And when it were, there were only a few states where this existed and it was a new idea, people were afraid of it. People said, yes. anyone's going to be, uh, you're going to allow people to carry firearms without a permission slip from the government? We're going to become the wild, wild west. There's going to be shootouts in the streets. It's going to be like mass carnage, mass chaos. And you know what? Several states passed it. We established it as a policy. In the state of Maine, we actually w w became an even safer state. <laughs> we became the safest state in America. And the more states that got on board and did this and demonstrated that there was nothing to be afraid of, in fact, things got safer, things got better, then... New York State early. has the worst gun laws, strictest gun laws in the plant on the on the on the entire country. New York State has the worst gun laws, the most strictest gun laws, and we just brought the National Guard into New York City to stop crime. Yeah, <laughs> because That's, it yes. turns it turns out when someone wants to use a firearm to commit a crime, they don't stop to make sure they've got the proper paperwork first. Who would have known? By the way, Gene is is asking a lot of questions today, so you're gonna have to help us out here. Gene wants you to now explain constitutional carry. All right. It's as simple as this. Um, if you can legally own a firearm, um, you can carry it open or concealed without a permission slip from the government. That's what constitutional carry is. There we go. There we go. I got to tell you, your fear part is, is I always tell this story. People who've been watching this know to tell this story often. I was, this is a couple years back. I was at a fundraiser in someone's house in Oklahoma. And as you know, the gun laws in Oklahoma, way different than New York State, right? And they're all libertarians. So at least half of the people are carrying. 
I mean, probably more. I couldn't see them all, but at least half were carrying a lot of them open. You can just see it, right? So someone takes a picture of me at this place, and there's a couple of people there, and you can see them carrying. I remember some of my friends here in New York, like, oh my God, is that a gun? It's like, yeah. They're like, weren't you afraid? I was like, I'm in the safest place I could possibly be. Like, there's no place I could think of that's safer. There's over a dozen people, at least half of them are carrying. If somebody walks in this house and they want to do something bad, they're going to have a bad night. They're going to wish they did not choose this house. Like, I I was as safe as could be. But a lot of my friends in New York, seeing the gun, made them afraid. Just seeing it. They're like, oh, uh, uh, it, it's, it's going to jump out and start killing people or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but I, yeah. I think your point's a valid one. Yeah, they've been conditioned like Pavlov's dog, right? By yes. by pop culture and the media. You see it and you're you're afraid, right? Why are you afraid? It's not going to start shooting itself, right? Yes. But but right. that but that's but that's what the media has conditioned us to. If you haven't grown up with firearms in the home, if you haven't been exposed to them growing up and trained in how to responsibly handle a firearm, yeah, people people are afraid. And 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 that's uh, that's something that's certainly something we have to combat and that's why Passing constitutional carry across the country, showing that freedom works in this capacity has been has been so important. So let me go to the next piece here, which is you push the idea of decentralization. This is like freedom, but I feel like that makes people feel like there's chaos, right? People when I particularly again, I'm gonna go back to where I live in New York. Whenever mm -hmm. something goes wrong, almost always the first question is we gotta have a law. Right. We that's like the first thing they almost always say. I know people who will say this once we need federal legislation. Like that's the first thing, right? My car broke down. We need federal legislation against cars breaking down. Like we just need that to happen right away, right? It's the first thing people think of is when things go wrong, I need control. Someone has to control, someone's got to control. And decentralization feels scary. Like, no, 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 that's the wrong way. Now there'll be more chaos. When you hear that, do you just want your head to explode? <laughs> well, cer certainly oftentimes, you know, people, yeah, something bad happens and people say there ought to be a law and they usually yes. ignore the fact that there are already 10 laws in place that were supposed to stop yes. it from happening in the first place and they didn't work and an 11th law isn't going to make it any better. In well, fact, Eric, if we just had one more law, <laughs> then we'd be perfect. That's all we need. Right. <laughs> and so oftentimes what these laws actually do is they 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 interfere with the organic mm. uh, process that happens through, uh, you know, we call it spontaneous order. Right. People solving problems in real time in, a, in, in an organic you know, marketplace. The government just comes in with with arbitrary decisions that stop the, the functioning of the marketplace and stop us from getting to real solutions. Right. So decentralization means that people are solving these problems. They're solving it from the bottom up rather than the top down. Got it. Let me grab a super chat if I could. Bowl of Special K. Thank you for $2. I appreciate that. Have a wonderful rest of your days, Larry and Eric. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that tremendously. Very the nice. rest of our days? That sounds like... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> sounds like he's are... counting down the clock on us. <laughs> uh, that may be a scary thing. Uh, Missy, do me a favor. Reach out to him. Thank you. My, my, my engineers are listening. Please reach out. Just to make sure that that's a positive thing and not a negative thing, um, and I, I'm I'm saying it kind of negatively, but however, there are times on social media that people do try to say goodbye, and I would like, if that's the issue, to not say goodbye tonight. Yeah, that's okay. I, I'm sure it was meant positively. I'm mostly. Joking. I hope it is, but I don't want to take a chance. So, yeah. if my engineers are watching, please reach out to make sure that is just something nice. That's all. No worries. Just to make sure. I do want to talk about something else though, which is speed. You said. 22 years we've been working on this. Is this something that has to be done? Okay, he's good. Bowl of Special K says it's positive. Thank you. Good, yes, there we go. And of course, Missy's amazing. She jumped right on it as she should. Well done, Missy. So, so yes. Um, the question I have, though, is it, does speed matter? And I don't mean it as a joke. Or, I mean, seriously, like, are you saying to yourself, you know what, by if we don't get this done by 2030, we're in trouble or... Now we have time. If it's 2050, it's good or any of those things. Does speed matter? Is this an issue or is it just, look, we keep working. What happens, happens. You know, I think that we need to be focused on process and we need to be, we need to move with urgency. Like, yeah, there are very important things at stake every single day. And, uh, and yeah, we, we need to move with urgency to get to Liberty as fast as we can. 
but also we need to understand that Rome wasn't built in a day. A free, a free, a free society won't be built in a day. Uh, this is going to be the work of generations, but through concentration in a state like New Hampshire, we will achieve it faster than anywhere else. Right. So we how do you know you're winning? I mean, Eric, how do you know that, you know, do you know how many people you have, right? Do you know, oh, we've got 1,000, we've got 20,000, we've got 100,000. Do you know how many people you have? Are you counting people? Are you counting people who are elected? How are you measuring success? So like, it's a year from now, two years from now. How will you know that you're winning? Yes. I mean, there's a number of ways to try to count. So as far as like people moving to New Hampshire, I mean, we can count. I mean, we, we can't count everyone because not everyone... Libertarians don't always like to register themselves, <laughs> you know, I've but, noticed. But oftentimes people come to New Hampshire and they don't let us know. And hey, that's great. We're glad that they came. We'd love to know that they're here so that we can, you know, say hello and get them involved with the community. But we, we can count for certain at least about 7000 people since the start of the project who've moved to New Hampshire wow. under the Free State okay. Project. And when you average that out, that's about one mover every single day over the life of the project. So wow. pretty good. Pretty good, I think. That is pretty good. I would agree. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Um, but uh, that's just one way to measure it, right? We also measure it in terms of just the vibrancy and the growth of the Liberty community in New Hampshire. I mean, I'll tell you, since I came, uh, started coming over to New Hampshire, it's kind of like, the Ron Paul campaign ended in 2012 mm. and in New Hampshire, nobody got the memo, right? It's like every it. single day there's a Liberty event, a Liberty meetup. You can, it, it, it's, it's wonderful and awesome. But then you can also tell by the fruits of the policies that are passed, the people who are getting elected to the state legislature. I mean, New Hampshire is leading the way with, uh, with uh, education freedom accounts, money following the students, real school choice, leading the way with passing Defend the Guard, one of the very first states to get it through a legislative body, leading the way with no income tax, no sales tax, and so many little little uh, freedoms along the way too. Like this is a pet peeve of mine, right? Seatbelts. I love wearing seatbelts. I think it's a great idea to wear a seatbelt. I don't like doing it with a gun to my head. New Hampshire mm -hmm. is the only state in America that has resisted like federal bribe money to avoid having a mandatory seatbelt law for adults. Okay, so here's what I know for sure then. The the deaths on the on the um on the streets are like magnified by like 75, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, of course not, right? <laughs> of course not. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? And you should wear a seatbelt. I think probably you should for your own sake and the sake of your family, but like should you do it under threat of violence from the state? I, I say not. And and even in those, it's, it's a small thing in the grand scheme of things. But but it but it is a it is a symptom of something that is going right in New Hampshire, which is the only state that has said no time and time again. Even that little small marginal freedom, they will not give up to the federal government right. and their mandates from Washington, D.C. So those are ways we can measure success in terms of the community, in terms of the policies, in terms of the fact it's ranked the number one state for freedom in America. Well, the funny thing is you're basically talking about culture, and James brings this up. James says, speed is the last thing I can think about when dealing with a culture that has been against you for centuries. It takes a lot of time for change to occur. And when you when you think about what James is saying, I I agree. So looking at that, I think you've you've come far farther. And my gut says it's a snowball, meaning that because you're because people won't won't allow this type of law, they also won't allow others. And eventually, when you have the newer law that or the repealing of a law, you're more apt to say yes. I think New York's the opposite. As we and I think that shocked me the most. And I really was surprised and I shouldn't have been, but I guess because I'm a New Yorker and I wanted to believe that we were better than this. I just didn't want to believe it. I did not imagine how quickly New York would just acquiesce to lockdowns. Yeah, I was. And I, again, looking back now, I should have known it. But you know, I'm a proud New Yorker. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to believe it. We were the people who were like. Go to hell, you, where you, I'm walking here, right? That's us. We're not going to put up with this stuff. Oh, my God, was I wrong. The and city I think that never is, sleeps went silent. Yes. Yes. And I and this I think this is to James' point. I think we had slowly been crushed for so long 
right? The, the boiling frog analogy, right? That by the time it hit, we'd already been boiled. And we didn't, and yeah. me being a libertarian, I thought, nah, this is not happening. I think my head was in the clouds, man. I think I yeah. didn't want to see it. So I didn't, but we are the opposite. We are just taking whatever they give us. It's bad. Yeah. That people had their will to resist just eroded and crushed over time. And, and I will say, I think, you know, for, 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 for me, I mean, I felt like I, <laughs> I, I was able to see what was going on. I think so many libertarians were able to see what was going on because it was the exact same playbook that the government used after nine 11, you know, yeah. hype up people's fear, make them afraid, make them afraid yeah. of a, a threat that could come out of nowhere at any time. It's an invisible threat. You're never safe unless you hand over power to us and follow our arbitrary uh, mandates um, day in and day out. And um, yeah. yeah, it was I, bad. And again, looking at it I, again, now that I'm looking back at it, it was obvious they used 9-11 to destroy us. That was the end of New York City's freedom was 9-11. That was the end, yeah. right? When that happened to us, that, that was the end of us, right? And I should have seen it, but you know, look, sometimes you don't want to believe things that don't. So I just didn't. That's that's all I can say. Justin O'Donnell, how are you, sir? He says, even New Hampshire, the government tried to lock us down. What made us different was how many people resisted, how many businesses illegally opened their back doors, and how many communities can thrive anyway. I think that's a valid point. The culture matters is my point. In New York, there were some who did. And the problem is when they did, the government locked down and hit them hard, literally put them in jail. Literally, cops came in and locked them up. I mean, they used violence. And I remember someone one, uh, once said to me, they said, Larry, aren't you scared that if the government has all these rules that, you know, they're gonna, there's going to be a guy with a white truck come by and like pick people up the street and go, you're a bad guy or something like that. I said, I'm not afraid of the government to be forward with you. What I'm afraid of is the neighbor who calls them. Yeah. That right? was, That's the problem. That was one of the most disturbing things to see. I think that was in New York, right? It was someone, uh, some yes. people said, you know, it used to be that snitches get stitches, but now snitches get rewards. So yes. call the government and report on your neighbor. If they're outside and they're not wearing a mask and they're trying to live their life and they don't realize how much they need us. Yes. In New York City, kids would be out in a skate park. Okay. Kids outside yeah. in a skate, in a skate park. So they're doing athletics outside People would call in and say, nope, stop this. Nope. And the cops would come by and stop them. Yeah. I rem I just, okay, look, if you're afraid, I get I'm not mad. You're afraid, stay home, right? You're afraid, I got it, stay home. But well, why are you calling on your neighbor? I, I couldn't believe it, but I will never fall for that again. Like, lesson learned. But it was, it was embarrassing and shocking for me that happened in New York and so quickly. Yeah. So I think he's right when you have, when you have a um, a critical mass, maybe, of, of people who would say, no, don't, you can't do that. You know, don't, don't follow the, the police, don't follow the rules. And I would bet, I would assume that some of your police force is libertarian too. So they probably didn't want to enforce. So they were like, sheriffs were probably like, I don't want to enforce this stuff. I'm not doing this. Not in New York. They were like, yeah. hammer, hammer. And it's really hard. So, anyway, killer. yes, it is. What was the, I never forget the the one Star Trek episode back from the sixties, original Star Trek, when there's um when there is a um uh, a switch like they go to an evil parallel universe. I don't know if you happen to remember that old episode from the sixties. My in wife's Trekkie, but I haven't watched it so much. In the parallel universe, the Federation is now the Empire, so they became the bad guys in this universe, right? <laughs> Do the they bad all guys. have like evil mustaches. Yes, Miss Spock has the evil. Yes, he does. He has the evil goatee. That's correct. Yes, he has the evil goatee. Right. That's how you and know. So that's how you know, right? Because he's got the evil goatee that makes him evil, Spock. So yes. Yeah, so when when Captain Kirk is, from the good Captain Kirk goes to the bad Mister Spock and tells him, "Why are you doing this?" He says, literally, "I'm sorry." Yep, yeah, Mike knew it. It's called a uh, mirror universe. All that beards. There we go. Yes. So, uh, but he says to him, he goes, "Terra must be maintained, or the Empire will fall." This is the 60s in a sci-fi. This hasn't changed, my friend. Eric, this is still true to this day. Yeah. Well, and of course, <laughs> this idea wasn't invented in the 60s. I mean, this is all a human <laughs> yes. civilization. Tyrants yes. realize that fear is how you yes. control mass populations. And um, yes. so, you know, we got to not be afraid.
Don't let our fear control us. Yes. Pete asked a question. I think he's joking, but but you can help me out with this. But Larry, aren't the taxes high in New Hampshire? I have a feeling Eric's going to tell me no. Um, so some folks criticize that the property taxes are a little bit higher than some other states. Oh, the property taxes are higher. Okay. And so that's fair. But you have to look at it all together. No income tax, no sales tax whatsoever, right? Um, and so, yeah, there, there, there are the property taxes. And now, but here's the great thing. Rather than death by a million cuts where the government is just getting you here and getting you there and just nickel and diming you everywhere, there's a million different taxes and you can't follow all of them. There is basically this one tax that is easy for the people to follow and to fight against as they try to raise it and lower it. And also a lot of it falls on, on a, you know, local kind of, you know, municipal government who are, who set a lot of pro the property taxes where individuals have a much greater say in what goes on in local government than you, you do when it's uh, when it's, you know, in state government and federal government and all that. So the more local it is um, the better and easier to control those tax rates. Well, the Free State Project, I think, would agree with you. As they say, we actually have the second lowest overall tax burden. And when our only tax is that property tax, it means more of your dollars stay local. So I think they're a little bit biased, I think, but I get what they're saying. <laughs> Thank you, whoever is operating the uh, Free State Project <laughs> account they, right now. Thanks for the backup. I appreciate it. <laughs> they got you back for sure. So before before I wrap this up, um, Eric, am I missing something? Something that we should have talked about that I didn't, something that I missed? Well, I just want to promote two big events that are coming up, right? Please. So not this weekend, but next weekend uh, in Nashua, New Hampshire. So not too far away from you, Larry. I hope that you'll consider coming and joining us. We have uh, from Friday, March 15th to Sunday, March 17th, the New Hampshire Liberty Forum. Uh, Here this we go. Is, uh, we're going to have many great speakers, including our top three keynote speakers, uh, Tulsi Gabbard is speaking, is Ooh, coming and speaking there with we us. Go. And she is being speculated about as a potential vice presidential candidate. So you might want to yep. come and, and, and see that. Uh, Glenn by two Dick people, by the way. Oh, I don't know if you know that. Yes. <laughs> is RFK the, talking about it too? Yes. There oh, is a rumor right. that she could either be, be Trump's or RFK's vice president. She's rumored. I guess everybody wants a piece of Tulsi. I guess so. Good well, for her. You know, when she's Glad an independent, she's a free agent, I suppose. Well, Glad you left the Democratic Party behind. Um, yeah. We also have uh, Glenn Jacobs, you know, the mayor of Knox County, Tennessee. And Had him on my show. Love him. Great guy. And for those who don't know him, he's also uh, famously known as Kane in the WWE. Yes, he uh, he's uh, going to be a keynote with us. And so is uh, Brian Kaplan, who's a professor of economics, George Mason University. And we got many other great speakers besides them. So folks can uh, get tickets at nhlibertyforum.com. Hope that the, the folks will come out and join us. It's going to be a great event. And then also, Larry, in addition to inviting you to join us at Liberty Forum, the folks organizing the Porcupine Freedom Festival this June specifically asked me if, while I'm on, I would extend an invitation to you, Larry, to come join us. Have you ever been to Porkfest? I've never been to Porkfest, not once. All right, that is a crime. You are so close. This is the biggest Liberty Festival in America. It's a family-friendly freedom festival. Uh, it's June 17th to the 23rd, Rogers Campground in Lancaster, New Hampshire. We're going to have Ron right. Paul is going to be speaking with us virtually. He's not going to be there in person. He doesn't travel as much as he used to, as you can yeah. imagine. He's, he's, but, he's getting up there in, in, in years. I give him a pass. Yeah. I give him a pass. But you could get to go camping with 2,000 of your favorite libertarians, including Scott Horton, Gene Epstein, Jeffrey Tucker, James Bovard, David Friedman, many more. Uh, folks I do like get, those guys. That's true. Are, I do like those guys. They are good guys. We're missing someone, though. We're missing Larry Sharp. So mm, we got to get, come now. We got to get All you right. there. And uh, folks can get tickets at porkfest.com. And uh, love to be able to announce that you're joining us, Larry. Yes, um, and it's true. Justin has invited me more than once, but very often I have been campaigning. He's not wrong. That's campaign season for me. That's why. I'm usually in some place in New York State in some diner yelling at people. That's what I'm usually doing that time. Are you campaigning so, yes. this year? I campaign every year. I cross my state every single year, 62 counties, go to every one of them. I call it the full sharp. Then it's six years in a row. This will be my seventh year I do it this year. And if not campaigning for myself, I campaign for others. I, when I run, I raise money for myself. When I'm yeah. not running... I raise money for others. I've raised over a million dollars 
for other people other than myself. Well, you don't need to come up for the whole week. Come up for a day or two. We would love to have you. And it's it's not that long a drive for you. You, you're, you're, You're pretty close as it is. It's true. Uh, one more super chat. Thank you, Optimistic Patriot 69 for the $5. Loving this discussion. Keep up the top tier content. I ah, think this is top tier. Top tier content. Is. All right. What a compliment. And you are dressed for it. By the way, Pete loved your answer. He says, great answer. Thank you. All right. I don't remember which question that was, but thank you. That was for the tax question. Oh, awesome. That was the tax question. Yes. The great babe says, Larry. I'll hit up Porkface with you and be your, your security detail. <laughs> Sometimes, this is true. When I run for office, I often require security when I run for office. I do. And I've, yeah. I've used militia in the past for security. So maybe I'll grab him. Maybe, maybe he'll, run, he'll run my security. And I do want to say, I do want to say to him, because I read the comment, uh, he, he, he did one thing, which I'm always cautioning people against, because you, you want to make sure people find the right website. It's Porkfest with a C, not with a K. If you go to Porkfest with a K.com, oh. I don't know what you're going to find. <laughs> Maybe some great tickets for barbecue or something, but it's the Porcupine Freedom Festival, Pork with AC. So porkfest.com, you'll find the family friendly freedom festival you're looking for. There we go. I think that was amazing. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching today. I do appreciate it. I will be back on. I'm considering my team's been bugging me about doing another Thursdays with Kathy to tease my governor. I might do that, but I will be on either tomorrow or Friday. I promise I will. Eric, thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate it. Hey, Larry, it's been a pleasure. And for everybody else, please make sure you like and comment. It does matter. And follow him, please, at Senator Reiki, if you would. And also, Free State and H, both on Twitter. I will see you all. Oh, one more thing before I say that. Please, once this is over, go back and leave a comment on my YouTube page and my Facebook page and my Twitter after this is done. Because the Al Gore rhythms like when you do that. So leave a comment after this is over. I will see you all 